Club night starting next door. Not the most conducive for solo acoustic, mild mannered performances. Wonder if I could do something that matches that. There's a New York City band from the mid-60s called The Gods, spelled with a Z. This is a God song. Permanent green light. chapter in my ongoing history of communism. I have eight chapters now, but I'm doing them out of order. So this is Complete History of Communism, Chapter 6, The Story of Vietnam. East of Thailand, south of China, is the country called Vietnam. They fought for centuries to free themselves from the Chinese. They wanted independence for so long. They were free 900 years. Then there came a time of tears when Vietnam was conquered by the French. Made to slave in French plantations under Western exploitations that they've not forgotten ever since. A student there called Ho left his Vietnam to go become a cook for European sailors. He lived in Harlem, London, and France, and he got a first-hand chance to see the Western world's successes and failures. After World War I's collapse, when the world redrew its maps, at the treaty meeting in Versailles, Ho attended pleading that they give Vietnam its freedom, but they wouldn't even let him try. Ho knew the USA had been a colony one day, and he admired the way we had fought before him. But he saw now only communism stood up for colonies, freedoms, while the capitalist world just ignored them. So Ho began communist studies and recruited other buddies. He wrote articles that reached back home. He kept organizing on the move until the chances might improve to get the French to leave poor Vietnam alone. Then in World War II's events, when the Germans beat the French, France's colonies were taken by Japan. So Ho returned to Vietnam after decades being gone. It was time to fight for real, not just to plan. Now organizing from within with his new name, Ho Chi Minh, independence forces started growing faster. And then when World War II wrapped up, the Japanese were crushed. So Vietnam at last had no more foreign master. So Ho Chi Minh declared a new free country then and there, quoting America's words of independence. But they had hardly settled down before the French came back around and they wanted their old colony back with a vengeance. So began an eight-year war the world had never seen before, a tiny colony against a Western nation. And the USA, for shame, loved independence just in name. We funded France to fight this liberation. Because in 1949, the communists had won in China, so the US wanted Europeans in control there. 
Vietnam now have the challenge of being right between the balance of big forces all trying to have a hold there. Then, unbelievable but true, in 54 at Dien Bien Phu, France was beaten, Vietnam was free in triumph. The guy in charge on France's side even committed suicide when he realized little David really beat Goliath. But the powers in the West would only compromise at best. They said, okay, Vietnam can have its own elections. But you have to wait two years, and right now to calm our fears, we'll cut the country in two temporary sections. So the communists can have Hanoi, but the U.S. will employ this corrupt guy named DM to run Saigon. But if the voting had gone forth, it would have won things for the North, so DM never let the vote go on. So began the Southern struggle, communist Viet Cong rebels trying to defeat their Southern leader. And the North helped them a lot, but when DM did get shot, it was by his own army, because they didn't like him either. The U.S. was desperate for a reason now to send our big armies in, so we claimed we'd been attacked in Tonkin Gulf, and the guy in charge of these naval wars was the dad of Jim Morrison of the Doors. That's true, and that's how the U.S. got more in Gulf. But if they're communists, who cares? Why are we even there? Those crazy questions nagged at the U.S. Well, meanwhile, the communists just repeated the same way France had been defeated, a total commitment to fighting off the West. So when Ho Chi Minh was dying at the age of 79, he knew U.S. involvement soon would break. And the U.S. did agree to withdraw troops in 73 with only death and devastation in its wake. So had Ho fought to free his land, or just for some communist agenda? Either way, the South was beat, the land united. And communistic land reform kept upheavals going on, with landlords killed and properties redivided. But by 1986, the policies began to switch to incorporate more Western economics. So now, like China, it's a mix of East and Western politics, with a violent weight of history upon it. And that brings us up to Chapter 7, the Cuban Missile Crisis, but maybe next time. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it.